All right, action. So we're here today with Mark Alperger from King of Kong. I'm on camera? Yes, you okay. are on candid camera. I'll sit up. Okay, um, first things first, why the Food Fight shirt? Oh, oh, okay, you noticed that. I'm glad you did. I'm really proud of this, James, because uh, all of my shirts, all of them, are original, never any repros. And that's one of my trademarks. Uh, you see a lot of these guys walking around with repros, and it's totally fine. You've got a repro, I think, on yeah. And that, I'm not down in it. It, it. You buy what you can buy. Well, what I have is a lot of video game friends from back in the 80s, because I was big as a player. And when I traveled to their houses, they like showing me some of their memorabilia. You know, you've seen guys pull out stuff, and we all have. So they pull out the shirts, and guess what? You can tell I'm a thin guy. Most guys in their 40s, I'm in my mid-40s, like a lot of the gamers from back in the early 80s, uh, have gained weight, a heck of a lot than me. I've gained one pound, I think. They've gained maybe a hundred. I'm exaggerating, but you get the point. A lot of people can't fit these shirts, and they say, you know, I, I ask them, why don't you wear it? Why don't you wear these? I, I see you at the show and you don't wear these. They say it won't fit, and then guess what I say next? Do you want to sell it? So I've collected a bunch that way, and I'm, I'm really proud. Again, all original. And look, at, that looks immaculate, doesn't it? This guy hardly wore it. It's just perfect. So that's the story on the shirts. I, I wear a great range. I've got like about, I don't know, 15 video game shirts and probably another six event shirts like Twin Galaxies tournaments. It shows, you know, the Twin Galaxies name, et cetera. So that's exciting. Okay, and so like on the shirts, do you have any of your own shirts from like 20 years ago? Oh, my own shirts? It depends on what you mean. I didn't, of course, run my website. Uh, and you're saying ones that I bought, I get you now. Uh, that you I, can actually still fit yeah, into yeah, 20 years oh, later, oh, yeah? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I can fit them all because I ain't gained any weight. Uh, one pound. Uh, let's see, some of them I washed too much, but I still have around Marble Madness, Return of the Jedi, except people, when I wear it, think I just came in from a pool because they're so paper thin you can see my skin and you know how that normally looks when you come in from the pool? Yeah, yeah, it's That's what they look like, but they're dry. So, I mean, literally, they're just paper thin. It's hilarious, <laughs> but I've got about three still back from then. That's a good question. Nobody's asked me that. All right, another question is, you know, uh, Michael Jackson's not the only guy with wearing one glove. <laughs> it's so. funny you mention that, buddy. Guess what's in here? Yeah, hey, now, I, we didn't set this up, did we? You nope. and I did not set this Definitely up. Not. I, I brought it with me. Now, this is the glove that I wore in the movie, The King of Kong. I have one other back in the 80s that's in my display case at home. But see this? That's the white color that it should be. See, that's the white. There's what happens. Now, see that wear mark there and there? That would happen on your hand. And you would just have a calloused, dried up, torn up hand from Marble Madness, not Crystal Castles. The marble madness so i use this to avoid the the damage that you can get from rack you know whacking that ball did you ever play uh, major havoc uh yeah i got a lot of pinches on that i wasn't a big player but that one will pinch you and i uh 20 second story for you All right. as you know the ball on millipede crystal castles marble madness track ball because it's a ball in a trap so what's major havoc's called it's a cylinder. In a track, so it's a track cylinder. Yeah. I coined that phrase, track cylinder. It doesn't appear in the Atari manual, but I said track cylinder. It pinches a lot. Yeah, I know yes. that. All right. Um, By the way, you know what this really is? Weight, bicycle? Weightlifting glove. Oh, okay. All right, and then and you only need one because you're only playing with one hand. Right, right? exactly. I'm right handed, never use the left, no problem. No sequins on it or anything no, like that? No, no gay Michael Jackson stuff. <laughs> I just get scores, not, uh, well, I was going to say a joke, but we won't, we won't disparage Michael. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so you, on what uh, games, including Food Fight, did you get high scores on? That's a, great, uh, that's a great question. Back in the 80s, I made the world record on Crystal Castles at the esteemed video game Masters tournaments. Uh, it's a series of tournaments in the mid-80s where you know, at literally hundreds of locations in 86 and 87, and I made my world record in 86, uh, people turned out. And so I set the score on Crystal Castles, later beaten, I'm number two now. Uh, Marble Madness, I had the second highest score in the world. Uh, food Fight, I have some world records for some weird ways to play, like uh, the highest score you can get on one man, and also try playing it without using the button. That's a weird track, but I've got the world record on that, 118,000 points. 
food fight fans try to beat me. 118,000 without using the so button. So you can't throw any pepper. Right. Kind of so thing. you've got to maneuver around and huh. lead them down the holes if they're in your way. It's very tough. Uh, also, I like the glob. And finally, uh, well, not finally, I like Roadrunner and Snake Pit. I love all those games. They're just some fabulous games. Try them in Maine, everybody who's watching this. Did you get a high score on uh, Roadrunner at all? Or? Roadrunner, I'm in. I was in second, now I'm in third place. I have 1.2 million. Brian Koo, a friend of mine, he usually comes here. He wasn't here this year. He was in the King of Kong. Right. Uh, Brian Koo made second a couple of years ago, 1.7 million. Unbelievably tough score. I'm going to try to catch him. 2.2 is the world record. Uh, Glob, I have the world record on. Arcade and Maimed. And Snake Pit, uh, I'm going to get the world record. I'm going to track down a guy who has one over in England. I'm going to fly to London, travel to his house, and set the record if he'll let me come over. So that's how serious I am about games. I'm going to fly to Europe for the first time leaving the U.S. ever. Never left the U.S. to set a world record on Snake Pit. Is that a rare machine? Or? Incredibly rare. Right now, I know of two. That's his rare. and Dale Luck, who sometimes here in California Extreme brings his. He hadn't brought it for years. I've been begging him, but I think it's broken, so it's not his fault. I've been begging him. Boy, I, I want that game bad. And that's on MAME too, right? Uh, it's All those are available on MAME, the ones I named. But of course, for prestige, you want the record on the coin on. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay, and then um, tell us about the new rumors about a new Twin Galaxies. I know of nothing other than uh, allegedly they're going to remake the website. Possibly they're going to de-emphasize some of the classics, though they, they've said that's not the case, and that's just conjecture on my part, I'm not saying they are. Uh, but let's be honest, the money's in the modern stuff, so they may generate that, though here's the thing, and I told him this, Steve Wiebe has made them more money than anybody or anything in their history. Because they come out to officiate the events, the, the, like E3 with big bucks, pay the refs, and they should be paid something. Uh, pay them to come out and uh, uh, officiate his games. Okay, and there was a story about a Tumwa, Iowa, where they were gonna oh, you mean the make new, a new building the new, or something. Uh, what is it, the uh, Hall of Fame? Maybe, I believe, yeah. uh, Walter mentioned it. I find it hard to believe, but you know he's not gonna lie about it. I wouldn't think uh, he would exaggerate either. Uh, apparently, Otumwa is going to devote a space. He says it's a city block. It's hard to believe they're going to spend that much money, but if they are, great. Uh, and build a, a Hall of Fame. And I think that there's maybe room for some of the memorabilia from Twin Galaxies. I believe that's what he said when I was at the Northwest show about a month ago, and he talked a little bit about it. Okay. So you'd have to ask him. That's my understanding. Yeah, the, the story I heard, I think it was on some news spiel, and then it was saying the city council liked it because they thought it would generate tourism and all that. Right, the question is, are they going to earmark the money for sure? I think that's up in the mm -hmm. air still, right? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's not like definite, but that 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 they were that they were happy about it so I far. Think, I think Walter said the wheels are in motion. So right. If it goes through, that's wonderful for Walter. It's wonderful for our hobby. Period. Okay. And um, how did you end up in the King of Kong movie? That's a that's another fantastic question. I think that's one device specifically asked me, James. Uh, basically, because I'm knowledgeable about the past, because I started in the '80s and and uh, went to my first contest, a Twin Galaxies contest, January 1985 in Westwood, California, near Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, basically, I met all the gamers starting in the 80s. Yeah. I played at numerous tournaments in the 80s and today, and I have a historical knowledge about Billy Mitchell, about the hobby in general. The uh, guys that were putting the movie together got wind of that, and that I was knowledgeable and said, yeah, we want to interview you because I was so knowledgeable and let's be honest, I present a good interview. I'm a bit of a ham. I, I can throw out some funny humorous comments and I talk to the camera relatively well. You know, right. you, you be the judge of that, the audience be the judge, but uh, all of that translated to some screen time as you saw in King of Calm because they they filmed other guys and I'm not down in them, I'm not going to name names, but they filmed other guys and you know they're kind of more, yeah, yeah, I, I played some games. Yeah, I'm good at this game. That's not going to make you on the film. All right. You know. All right. So I, I, that you know, I was interesting and knowledgeable to answer your question. All right. And then talking about the personalities, what do you think about the um, "Don't Get Trumpetized" guy there? Oh, Roy Schilt. Roy yeah. uh, was it the first contest I played back in January of '85? Uh, he's he's a 